During thousands of years of war there's always been trickery and probably one of the best examples of this is the Battle of Troy where they used the wooden horse to trick the enemies which eventually led the city to fall. During World War II versions of this was tried as well. Maybe not with a wooden horse but you get the point. One of these operations was Operation Greif and this happened during the Battle of the Bulge. The idea was to disguise German troops with American and British equipment. Afterwards they were to cross the Meuse and try to capture as many brigades as possible. But first before we go into more details, if you enjoy my video please make sure to leave a like and sub. I'm saying this because 80% of the people who watch my videos aren't yet subscribed. So if you are not and you enjoy my videos please consider subscribing. Thank you. The man who led this operation was named Otto Skorzeny and he was tasked to create the 150th Panzer Brigade. The role of the 150th was to cross the Meuse River and to capture two or more brigades if possible. And to help with this, they decided to give them enemy gear to cause more confusion amongst the American and the British. However, a downside of this is that you would break the Hague Convention of 1907. This was about the treatment of prisoners of war. To conclude it, it says that if you are captured in an opposing army uniform, they are allowed to treat you like a spy and execute you right then and there. In preparation of this plan, Skorzeny met with Gert von Rundstedt in November. However, Skorzeny noted his reaction to be disappointing to hearing the plan. His main concern being the usage of enemy uniforms and weapons. However, General Kerbs was more open to this operation, promising Skorzeny that he would have the full support for Operation Greif. However, this was not entirely true. When the operation was greenlit, they requested about 3,300 men, and this would be about 3 battalions. But eventually they only got 2,500 men. To deal with these manpower issues, it was scaled down to 2 battalions. Another issue was that only 400 spoke a bit of English, and even then you would just hear their thick German accents. Other disappointments include that only 2 Shermans were delivered of the 15 requested. And to make matters even worse, one actually broke down before the operation began and the other was not even serviceable at all. So to deal with this they used Panther chassis and modified it in order to make it look like an M10 Wolverine. In order to make this conversion work they needed a lot of imagination because when you look at these two images, they don't really look like each other. To make matters even worse for Scorsani, 74 out of the 194 trucks arrived, 57 out of the 150 jeeps and 8 out of the 26 half trucks, of 6 which were German. When reading this you could definitely see that this operation is doomed to fail. With not enough equipment and then half of the equipment is still German, not enough English speakers and barely one third of the equipment they requested. However even with all of this his superiors expected him to succeed. Even though they did not have full equipment to be able to perform the operation to the highest efficiency, the soldiers were motivated to fight, being described by Skorzeny as clearly animated by the most glowing patriotism. There were concerns about blue and blue fire, so they decided to have several signals when approaching the German lines. For example, knocking on their helmets and unbuttoning their shirts. Tanks were supposed to keep their main armaments at 9 o'clock and jeeps were to have the letters C, D, X, Y or Z on their hoods. Precautions like this seemed to work because there were no incidents reported of friendly fire despite having the high probability of them happening. On the 14th of December 1944, the 150th assembled and on the 16th they were supposed to be moving out supporting three Panzer divisions. But because the first SS Panzer division failed to make it on time, Skorzeny wanted instead for the 150th to be a normal Panzer unit. This request was approved and 4 days later Skorzeny tried to take the city of Malmody but failed even after repeated attempts. His entire unit would be wrecked by artillery taking heavy casualties in which Skorzeny was also actually injured. This would be also the only time the Germans tried to retake Malmody. The aftermath of this operation was not pretty for the Americans. Even though the original plan of the Germans had failed. It caused widespread paranoia amongst the troops, causing several blue and blue incidents. The way they tried to deal with this was to ask trivia questions about the United States only US citizens would know. And this ordeal would eventually continue well into the 1945s. Anyway, this was a shorter video but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you did make sure to leave a like and sub and uh, thank you to the members of my channel named VW German Looker Beetle and Sander for being members. If you have any subjects or events you want me to make a video about, let me know in the comment section down below. 
Thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Have a good day.